Welcome to the Center for Universal Oneness. We are an open, welcoming, spiritual community that supports all faith traditions and invites you to join us on your spiritual journey. We host different speakers each week to guide and inspire us. We are guided by universal principles of acceptance of all that is sacred, and we strive to live in the oneness of love. Please enjoy this presentation. Kelly Hunt is our uh, speaker today, and she's speaking on peace in you, peace in the world. And I think most of us are familiar with Kelly from her um, amazing work as a singer, and she's done many uh, recordings. Actually, it's like it says on the screen, she's working on our seventh album. And I think that's going to be uh, particularly special for this for us because she's written and performed a, uh, a number of New Thought uh, songs that are going to be included on that uh, and a holiday album as well. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing her new album. And uh, so at with that, I think there's a lot to say about Kelly, but I'll let her speak for herself. Kelly, take it away on peace. All right. Good morning, everybody. You can all hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to start this morning with a song because music uh, lifts me up and helps me to access just the feeling and the idea of peace. I wish you peace when the cold winds blow, warm by fire's glow. And I wish you comfort in the lonely times and arms to hold you when you ache inside. I wish you hope when things are going bad. Kind words when times are sad. I wish you shelter from the raging wind. Cool and water at the feet. to guide you in the dark and when your storms are high and your dreams are low I wish you the strength to let love grow Good morning, everybody. 
It is a joy and a pleasure to be back with Center for Universal Oneness. It's great to see your the faces that I can see and the names that I can I can see. So today is all about peace. And um, we know that uh, yesterday was Martin Luther King Jr.'s 93rd birthday, and tomorrow is the national holiday that we'll be celebrating in our country. And it's commemorating not only his birth, but the amazing work uh, that he did in not only our country, but around the world, and the immense effect that he still has to this day. His nonviolent, peaceful movement for equal rights for everybody uh, continues to this day. So I want to start today with a story. And it is um, a parable. And it goes like this. It says, there once lived a king who announced a prize for the artist who would paint the best painting depicting peace. Many great painters sent the king several of their best art pieces, and one of the pictures among the various masterpieces was of a calm lake, perfectly mirroring peacefully towering snow-capped mountains. Overhead was a blue, clear sky with fluffy clouds. The picture was perfect. And most of the people who viewed these pictures of peace, they all thought it was the best amongst all, and it would be sure to win. But when the king announced the winner, everyone was shocked. The picture that won the prize had mountains, too, but it was rugged and bare. The sky looked angry. There was lightning. This didn't look peaceful at all. It looked like the artist had mistakenly submitted this painting depicting a storm rather than peace. But if anyone looked closely at the painting, they could see a tiny bush growing in the cracks of the rock. And in the bush, a mother bird had built her nest. In the midst of the rush of angry weather, the bird sat on her nest with peace. Peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise and no trouble. Peace means to be, it means to be in the midst of all the chaos and still be calm of heart. The real peace is our state of mind not the state of our surroundings. The mother bird was calm despite her chaotic surroundings, and that was indeed the best representation of peace. Have you ever been in the middle of a storm, even a metaphorical storm, and thought, how on earth can I possibly be peaceful in the midst of this? I wondered that myself when the pandemic was just getting started the first couple of months, I thought, what in the world is happening? And how am I to keep a peaceful heart? And what would that look like? What would I have to do to do that? Well, there are lots of examples in our world. And I think that when we have peace within ourselves first, it doesn't mean we're not afraid. It doesn't mean there's not crazy stuff going on around us. It means that we are able to hold that within ourselves. And in my case, calling upon the higher power of the Christ consciousness that I know lives within me, not out there somewhere. I feel that we are 100% human and 100% divine. And we can call on that divine source at any time we want. There was a woman who called herself the Peace Pilgrim, and some of you might have heard of her. And she has a book that, sa that is called, This is the Way of Peace. And then she says, Overcome evil with good, falsehood with truth, and hatred with love. And she was an amazing person because from 1953 until 1981, she walked more than 25,000 miles across this country 
on a personal pilgrimage for peace. Now, I don't know about you, but 10,000 steps a day is a challenge for me. But 25,000 miles over the course of all those years. And this, when she, this was when she was an older woman. And she wore a blue tunic. That way you could identify her. This was her uniform. And she carried just a few possessions in her pockets. Her mission and her most important but simple message in thousands of communities throughout the, US, throughout the U.S. was this. She said, when enough of us find inner peace, our institutions will become peaceful and there will be no more occasion for a war. And today, her words, which are captured in books and videos and other media, you can find her on YouTube and you can Google Peace Pilgrim and see her. They still continue to inspire us. She's uh, what I would call an extreme version of someone who's dedicated her life and her mission to peace. You know, it would seem to be kind of a risky business to be out walking along the highways and the back roads and of, of our country for 25,000 miles. But not once did she have a negative experience with someone who bothered her or attacked her or tried to take anything she had because she really didn't have much. And my question was, how did she take care of herself during this time? Where did she stay? What did she do? And when she was asked this question, she said that she knew she would be taken care of. It was her intention to keep walking. And she knew that the right help would come at the right time. And can you imagine just jumping out in a blue tunic, putting a few things in your pockets, and setting out across the country? Because your mission was peace and to remind folks that that one idea was so important that you would do something like that. Well, here's what happened. As she walked along her way, sure enough, there were those who heard about her mission the longer it went on. And this was back before a lot of the social media was even happening. Word of mouth, neighbors, friends, uh, different organizations, charities, churches, just the everyday person on the street would see her walking and say, hey, are you okay out here walking along the road? And she'd say, oh, yes. I'm the peace pilgrim, and I'm here to talk about peace. And they'd ask her, well, where are you going to stay tonight? Do you have enough food? And she'd say, I don't know, but I believe it, it will be provided. And it always was. I think that's an amazing example of someone who lived her life with that kind of focus. Another ongoing example is someone that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called an apostle for peace and nonviolence. And he nominated this person for a Nobel Peace Prize. And that's Thich Nhat Hanh. And he, he was a, and is still, a Vietnamese monk who was banned from his country for promoting the idea of peace. He was banned. He had to leave. And it broke his heart. But what he did was he didn't, he didn't lose heart. Yes, he was sad that he couldn't be in his country. But he decided that his mission would live on. And in fact, his mission became larger. And he said, well, if I can't promote the idea of peace and nonviolence in my home country of Vietnam, then I'm going to promote it across the world. And that's what he did. And even though, I don't know, two or three years ago, he had a, a stroke that left him unable to speak. Um, he is still doing his promotion today. He founded in, the, in France uh, Plum Village, which was a Buddhist dharma or community. And that's where he's lived for many, many years. And that's where he is cared for by the monks and the sisters that are taking care of him. And people visit Plum Village from all over the world. He's written many books. One of my favorite is called Peace is Every Step which kind of reminds me of the Peace Pilgrim. Peace is 25,000 steps. It's a lot of steps. 
And the title of the book is Peace is Every Step, Peace in Oneself, Peace in the World. He's a poet. He's a peace activist. He is a global spiritual leader. Now, one of the beautiful things that happened in, in Not Han's life was he was finally allowed to go back to his beloved Vietnam, Vietnam. And that is where he is spending his last days, being well cared for by people who love him, people from Plum Village. And every now and then, he will come out in the public eye and just have a presence there and smile, which is part of his mission. He is not done yet. And I believe that even as he leaves the earth, his earthly body, his work will live on. Here's another example of someone who was very focused on peace throughout her life. Close to home, one of our best friends over the many years was a woman named Marsha Paladin. And Marsha was very interested in Not Han. She's the one that introduced me to him, uh, his works, back in the 1980s. It's funny to say that, way back in the 1980s. It seems like yesterday. It doesn't seem like that long ago. And she was um, a choreographer, a professional dancer. She was a tenured professor. And peace was what she wanted to embody in a jubilant way through her dance. And one Halloween, when our son was, was little, but big enough to want to go trick-or-treating, and we live out in the country, Marcia said, well, come, to, come in town to our neighborhood, and we'll trick-or-treat in my neighborhood. And I said, great. Well, let's do that. And so my son had his costume on, and I got to Marcia's door, and she came out, and she had a white robe on, and she had a crown of olive branches around her hair. I said, Marcia, what you, what you doing there, pal? She said, oh, um, I'm, I'm dressed as peace this year. <laughs> I said, all right, well, let's go trick-or-treating. And what was very interesting was, oh, and she carried an olive branch too. And as, as she and my son kind of sashayed down the street and went to the different houses, everybody in the neighborhood knew Marcia. And she'd show up with this little boy, and I'd kind of stand back in the sidewalk, because she and my, my son Adrian were good buddies, best pals. And she'd knock on the door, and my son would squeak out, trick or treat, and Marcia would just stand there with her olive branch, and everybody was very kind to my son, but they also noticed here was this beautiful presence of somebody they knew, and they all knew what she was dressed as. They got it more quickly than I did. And one of, one of Marcia's favorite sayings, and after, after Halloween was over and Adrian had his big stash of candy, I said, Marcia, that was such a wonderful thing that you did, and it kind of calmed down that frenetic, chaotic energy of trick-or-treat where kids are just, you know, jazzed up on candy and running and yelling. And it was just this peaceful, fun flow of a, an experience for my son. And she looked at me and smiled. She said, you know, Kel, what blesses one blesses all. And I thought, well, peace on you, sister. Marcia has since moved on up a little higher, and she has left this realm, but I feel her around me a lot, especially in times when I feel kind of my nerves feel jangly or I feel like I'm getting too wrapped up or anticipating something. And it's funny, but I see that Halloween costume and her saying, what blesses one blesses all. And it brings me, I can't identify it or I can't explain it, but it does bring me a sense of peace. Another example of peace that many of us had experienced, but we, my husband and I have only experienced this since October 19th, is the peace of holding a grandchild. We had never had that experience before. And now we have a granddaughter. 
And the first day she was born, we were we were allowed to come in one at a time into the into the hospital and put her in our arms and I just began to breathe differently. I began my body began to relax in a different way. And now whenever she is here, her name is Isabel Hazel. Whenever Isabel comes to our home and we get to watch her for several hours at a time, she'll snuggle in up next to us. She'll put her little head right here. And many times she'll just go to sleep. And I found myself not wanting to put her down (laughs) so, so she could rest because there was such a sense of peace and innocence there that the first time she did that, I held her for two hours and I didn't move. I didn't care if my arm was going numb. I didn't care if my back hurt. I thought this beautiful child is resting so peacefully on my chest. And there was a sense of peace that I had never felt in that way before. And I know many of you have. Just recently we've had in our part of the country here, uh, snowfall. And some of you have, I learned this morning, had four or five inches of snow. Our friends up in Buffalo have had, you know, 10 to 12 inches of snow. Out here where we live, it's about maybe three, four inches. But isn't there something about walking outside after it snowed or even during? There's a quiet there. Everything's covered, the trees, the bushes, the ground. And many times there's no traffic. There's really not much noise to be had after a snowfall. And this time of year gives us the gift of stopping for a moment. Stopping to take in our surroundings. If our moods are rising and falling according to the tidings of the latest news report, and boy, doesn't that happen a lot? There's so much going on around us, and it's been swirling around us. It feels like nonstop for a long time. So if we're in constant reactivity to others, it might seem kind of crazy to envision a good, bright future for our planet and all of us who live on it. But we know something important. We know that there's more than appears on the surface, and therein lies our power. The Christ consciousness of Jesus gave us the consciousness of peace and, is, and says, My peace I give unto you. And there are some days when I think, Well, I'm glad you're doing that because my peace doesn't seem to be here. So if I can call on or remember that source of divinity within myself that I can call upon that kind of peace, then I have a chance to access that more easily. I believe that first we have to make peace with ourselves. Forgiveness of ourselves, forgiveness of others. Dalai Lama said, World peace begins with inner peace. And I believe that's a constant uh, flow of an idea that we've heard over and over again throughout the ages. World peace begins with inner peace. And think about what, what does peace mean to you? What does that look like? When do you feel peaceful and How do you get there? What do you do to access that feeling? One of the things that uh, many people in our world, and I think this includes all of us, is equal rights brings peace. Safe shelter brings peace. Food for our families and ourselves When a person is hungry, it's hard to be peaceful because their focus has to be on survival. Being heard 
Have you ever had something on your mind that you felt was so important to you, but nobody was truly hearing you? That can feel off base. That can make you feel off kilter, and it doesn't feel peaceful. If we have an, a chance to just be heard, that can help us bring peace. Safety. If we are safe in our environment and we can provide that for someone else, if we have a home to live in and we can close the door at night and lock that door and we feel safe there and secure from the elements, that is a very peaceful feeling. Yesterday when it was just snowing like crazy out here and the roads hadn't been plowed yet and we had food to eat in our home, we were warm there, we didn't have to be out on the road. There was a time before a pandemic when we were uh, on tour a lot in North America and in Europe, and many winters, in fact, most winters, we were out on the road. And it was stressful. And it was sometimes dangerous. But we didn't, we didn't have to do that yesterday. And it felt, it brought a sense of peace and calm to our home that I really appreciate. In fact, I think I appreciate it more knowing what it was like to not do that during weather like this. Martin Luther King, who we are remembering yesterday, today, and tomorrow for our national holiday, said, true peace is not merely an absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. It is the presence of justice. And taking care of one takes care of all. When one of us is not free, none of us are free. We bring peace to others. We bring peace to ourselves. So I mentioned that I believe that we are wholly human and wholly divine. So do the best you can. Shoot. I think sometimes uh, many of us can be kind of hard on ourselves. We think, ah, I could have done better. Why did I speak out in that way when I really meant to say this? Why did I not choose kindness or compassion in that moment why did i not listen and really allow that person to be heard without judgment why did i do that well i believe it's because we're human so just do the best you can give yourself that moment of saying hey you know what i did the best i could in the moment i learned what i needed to learn and shoot I'm going to do better next time, but I'm not going to beat myself up for it because that's the opposite of feeling peaceful. I am going to treat myself like I would treat a beloved. If, if one of my beloveds had a bad day and they spoke in anger and I knew that they were just tired, they were stressed, something else completely else was going on, it wasn't about me, I wouldn't, you know, think, oh, well, that crazy person and rah, 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 rah. No. I would either give, I would just give him the space or I'd say, you know, I'm sorry you're having this kind of day. I love you. I'd hug him, whatever I could. Well, if I can do the same thing for myself when I'm cranky, when I've had a hard time or when I've watched too much news and everything starts to pile up on me and I think, oh, what can, just this one person, what can I possibly do to make the world more peaceful? I can say to myself, hey, it's all right. You did the best you could. You're just human guess what give yourself a break in romans 12 18 it says if it is possible as far as it depends on you live at peace with everyone and i would add including yourself we're 100 percent human 100 percent divine not always possible do the best you can and in 14 19 it says let us therefore Make every effort to do what leads to peace, and I love this, and to mutual edification. What blesses one blesses all. And here's a challenging one that Desmond Tutu said, and what a wise man he was, and what a living example of what it meant to help bring justice and peace to our world. What a life he led. He said, if you want peace, 
Don't talk to your friends. Talk to your enemies. Oh, and I think there is a, a, that's a big challenge for me. If you want peace, don't talk to your friends, talk to your enemies. And I would also say, listen to them as well. So here's some things to try this week. Get outside if you can. I know it's cold. I know it's snowy. And if it's not safe for you to do that, then don't. But if you can't go outside, then open up those curtains and those shades and look at the beauty of nature. I want to read you a poem that talks about that very thing. Many of us have heard it, but it felt right to read it today by Wendell Berry, The Peace of Wild Things. And I read this poem over the last couple years several times on days when I thought, here are the list of things I can't do today. I can't be around my friends. I can't be around my family. I can't, I can't, I can't. But I can walk outside. And this poem says, when despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's life may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. It behooves us to do whatever we can to soothe our own souls so that we may be there for others. And every person who does this for themselves brings the possibility of peace to the world even higher and higher. Bringing peace to others can bring peace to ourselves. Another thing we can do is just set our intention for peace. Just say, hey, today I'm setting my intention to have a peaceful day, no matter my circumstances. Have you ever had one of those days where something happened, you got ah, another thing happened, you thought, what, what's going on today? And yet another thing happened. And it seemed to kind of build and build and build. Big opportunity to notice what's happening and step away from it. I remember one time we were playing a, a festival in Oklahoma City and we had to come from another town, another state altogether, and my equipment didn't show up on the airplane. No keyboard, no none of my stuff. And it was time to go on and I was like, whoa, oh, we were running late and oh, this happened and that happened. We didn't have time to eat before the show. And it felt like, I, I remember saying out loud, what next? And then I thought, what can I do? What opportunity, what's opening up for here, me right now? And I looked on the stage and the group in front of us and they were playing a keyboard. They had a keyboard player and the keyboard's kind of similar to ours. And I thought, as soon as they come off stage, I'll ask that musician, would it be possible for me to play that for our set? And in return, you know, we can give you some merchandise or some, a big hug. I don't know. And he said, sure. Oh, okay, well, shoot, that worked out. And pretty soon, you know, we played our set, we came off, and I had mentioned to somebody else, gosh, I wish we would have been able to eat before we jump up and work, because if you don't have that uh, sustenance, it's harder to do your job. I went off the stage, and somebody said, here, here's a plate of food for you guys. Come over, sit down, and rest for a second and eat. And when I changed my focus, and, and I felt things were too chaotic, what I can't do, and switched it to what is possible. It brought a peace to me and actually a feeling of relief and a feeling of joy that I really hadn't expected at all. So I'll, before we go into meditation, I, I'm going to end with this. Two things. Where we direct our attention really does matter. Psalm 37, 37 says, Consider the blameless, observe the upright, a future awaits 
for those who seek peace. And lastly, Martin Luther King said, and we all know this one, be the peace that you wish to see in the world. So we're going to get centered and comfortable and ready for meditation. And wherever you are today, just take a nice deep breath, nice and slow. And take another breath. And make sure that you are absolutely comfortable in your chair. And tuck your lower back in and let your neck relax. Take a big yawn and relax those jaws. <gasps> there is peace. There is quiet when we touch the stillness. Take another breath, and we allow our shoulders to relax and release, knowing that we are connected completely and in every way to the divine within each and every one of us, knowing that we can draw on that source of peace and comfort whenever we become still and allow it to happen. There is peace, there is quiet. When we choose to touch the stillness, As we gently and slowly return to our surroundings, 
we again take a deep breath. And if we choose, we can slowly open our eyes and remember that what blesses one blesses all. And we invite the divine and the source of our peace to walk with us this day so that we may be pleasant for ourselves and for others. And so it is.